Hey guys, this video is about the Tristan chord from the opera Tristan and Isolde, written by German composer Richard Wagner. In this video, I'm going to explain how it is closely related to the old Phrygian cadence. The Phrygian cadence is basically going from A minor down to the fifth degree E and pausing there, but uh, typically doing so with descending motion in the bass. With harmony. The term cadence means the end of a musical phrase and the reason we're calling it Phrygian cadence is because when you're playing it, you realize that it is the first half of the Phrygian mode, the E Phrygian. So now let's zoom in on this moment, this F, this is where the Tristan chord happens. So we start with this simple D minor over F moving to D and the first thing Wagner does is to add this, this chromatic passing tone. Next he's moving it from this upper voice to this inner voice, this way. Then he gets rid of this D going straight from this D sharp. And the next thing he does is to add these two approach tones. So this A moving to G sharp is getting this B. And same thing with this A, he's getting a G sharp. And now we're almost done. So compare it. The last thing he does is to add, before this B, this approach tone A sharp. So he gets. In the Mozart case, these two inner voices from Wagner are going the opposite direction. So with Wagner it's, with the Mozart is, here's the Tristan chord 60 years earlier in the symphony in G minor, I transposed it to A minor so we can see the similarities. In the Mozart case, the Tristan chord happens within the flow of the music. It's also easier to hear the context of the Phrygian cadence because by the time we hear this chord, we already know what key we're in. Wagner, however, is giving us zero information about where we are tonally. We just hear these three initial notes and all of a sudden, That's very dramatic. Tristan and Isolde is a drama happening between Ireland and the Kingdom of Cornwall, now in the south of England. So apparently Ireland is demanding a yearly payment from uh, Cornwall, uh, specifically uh, the knight 
morals from Ireland, and the only one who would stand up against him and fight him is Tristan from Cornwall. Now Tristan travels to Ireland. He fights Morold, and he kills him. But he also receives a poisoned wound from Morold. And for some reason, Morold, just before dying, is telling Tristan that the only one who could save him from that um, poisoned wound is his sister Isolde. Now, in some versions, it's not his sister; it's his fiance. So imagine that. So now Tristan has to. Uh, Hide his true identity, and somehow Isolda finds him, and she helps him. But um, at some moment, she discovers his true identity, and as he's lying there helpless, she's about to kill him with his own sword. Um, but she cannot do it uh, for some reason. He is something about the way he looks right into her eyes, and. He promises never to be back, and he's um, he's back to Cornwall. But he is back this time to bring Isolda against her will to marry his king. Now on the ship, uh, Isolda is demanding that they will uh, have some kind of a, a toast, an atonement, and Tristan realizes that he might die from it. He knows that Isolda has her powers, her potions. And indeed, she is planning to poison both of them. But at the last moment, Isolda's maid is replacing the poison with love potion. They are back to Cornwall, and Tristan is torn between his love and his devotion to uh, the king, and his passion for Isolda. They cannot hide their passion for long, and they are discovered. And uh, the story ends with the death of Tristan and Isolda. Remember what we said about the Phrygian cadence being associated traditionally with sorrow, with sadness. And it might be symbolic that Wagner is starting this sad story of Tristan and Isolde straight from the heart of this cadence, from the end of it. If you like this video, if you're new to this channel, you're welcome to join it by subscribing. You can like this video, you can even share it with your friends. And please ask questions and make comments in the comment section. I love answering questions.